this special election this month. So do groups, uh, do uh, people call and say, hey, I want you to do a poll on this? Uh, how do you, uh, yeah, we also do paid private polls uh, mm -hmm. as well as, you, know, you may have seen a lot of our polls on St. Peter's blog. That's a local blogger, uh, Peter Schorsch, who pays us to do a lot of local polling as well. Okay. okay. So tell me, how, uh, how did Vote St. Pete Org come about? How did this interactive ballot? Well, as uh, Leonard has mentioned, it kind of started as a brainstorming session, and then uh, the three of us, Amos, Leonard, and myself, got together here at our offices on Friday uh, and met for about five hours and came up with this concept. And we basically built this over a weekend. Brainstorming, uh, you just came, did you guys come with something in mind that you wanted to? Well, we knew we wanted to talk about the pier because that's a big question, what's going to happen to the pier if the lens design itself uh, is voted out, which our polling said uh, there was no question it was going to be voted out. And uh, our polling was pretty accurate on what the final totals ended up being for that. So we wanted to have, um, we wanted to have a solution ready to get feedback from citizens uh, and strike while the iron is hot. Uh, so that we could get, <clears throat> you know, while people were interested in this, get their attention and say, okay, it's not over, the vote's done, but now we've got to move forward. You know, what do you want to do? And so we thought this was a good basic um, set of questions, or in this case, one question to ask to, to say, how do you want to move forward? Uh, the first option is demolish only. The second is refurbish the existing uh, refurbish the existing pier. The third one is vote on recent designs, and the fourth one is call for brand new designs. You put this together in a weekend? Yes. One weekend, and you got one this? One weekend, yes. Uh, we already have the phone platform, and Amos is very good at web design. Um, so yeah, we, we basically threw this together. We met about it on Friday, uh, and then on Saturday, Amos had a lot of the framework together, and Saturday night I was working on the phone system tie-in uh, that you see at the bottom, mm -hmm. and also recording the prompts. And then by Sunday night, uh, it was all together and functioning and working. Uh, and then on Monday, uh, we were asked to meet with the board of the Concerned Citizens, uh, first time I've ever met with them, and they came here to our office because they were very interested in being able to offer a solution for what to do next, you know, a path forward. And that's when they invited us to be at their uh, election night event. I'm guessing you think this is the best way to get input. Um, the best way is at the ballot box. Uh, but the ballot box is expensive. Uh, it costs, to do a special election, it costs the city a quarter of a million dollars. This we're offering for free. Uh, the city doing some basic uh, marketing of this website or of whatever the questions are uh, that we choose going forward costs significantly less. Um, I believe uh, uh, Carl Nurse told me it's $1,000 to put a single basic insert into a water bill to 90,000 residents, uh, which is a huge reach. So that's much simpler and much cheaper and doesn't take the amount of planning of something like a special election. And you know, how do you do a special election on give me your ideas, you know, you've got to have a set of choices for a special election. Well, how do you think this will help? Uh, I think this will involve people that weren't able to make it to the meetings, people who are at home watching TV, can't get around easily, have very busy schedules. You can call this 24-7. Uh, you can go to the website. Uh, it's always on. So if we give them a month for each stage that we lay out going forward to contribute or to offer their opinion, then nobody has an excuse to say, I wasn't involved, uh, I didn't vote, um, because we've made it very easy. So where do you see this going? You see the uh, the city maybe, have you talked to the mayor? I haven't talked to the mayor. Uh, I've okay. sent him an email and hopefully I'll be able to talk to him about this, but we do have a schedule, uh, an event, or not an event, we have an item on the agenda for uh, Thursday, September 12th at 3 p.m. Uh, in the city council meeting. And so all of the city councils and mayor will hopefully be there 
to watch uh, us present what we watch us present our ideas. What do you want the city to do? Uh, help us with promotion, basically, to reach out to the citizens and say, here, go to this website. And we're going to be presenting a, a how to get feedback or get ideas from the citizens for what amenities they want in a new pier. Okay. Um, we're not going to be talking about designs. We're going to be talking about what people want out there. Do they want air-conditioned restaurant space? Do they want fishing? Do they want a kid's splash park? You know, all of that. Do they want to be able to drive out under the pier? Um, that kind of stuff. Those are the. That's the feedback we're going to be looking for. Then we're going to put that together and come up with uh, a list of ideas and allow people to vote on those ideas. Then pull the most popular ones and move forward from there. And the end goal is to have a list of amenities that architects would be able to use as a, a list of requirements for the future uh, proposals that they're going to be submitting. So who, <clears throat> I'm sorry, who come up with the, the questions? Will it be the city? Will you guys work together? What's your... Uh, well, that remains to be seen. We're very flexible, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, but what what are you looking? What is what are you envisioning? You envisioning kind of? I'm envisioning bringing together all parties. Uh, we're going to try to work with uh, the previous architects from the three designs, mm -hmm. uh, the city, of course, as well as anybody else who will give us uh, constructive input into what should come next on this. Mm -hmm. But we do have a plan. We do have some basic. Um, you already have some questions framework. in mind, but you we, we have the first question in mind, mm -hmm. um, which is what amenities you want to see out on the pier, and that's where we're going to start. And it's going to be free form uh, audio recordings when people call in, and a website form where people will be able to type in what amenities they want out on the pier. Oh, okay. So it won't be a one, two, start. three, four like the, the, exactly. The first step in our next phase is not going to be one, two, three, four. It's going to let people. So tell me what, what you have here. What do we have? Uh, this is a prototype. Uh, this is kind of the first step to show uh, what works, how it works, a proof of concept. And we came up with uh, these four options on our own because they're the ones that are very often talked about. Um, now I've heard from several people, you don't, not, you don't have on here the million dollar pier and you don't have on here... Um, leasing to a private company and things like that. But uh, those would kind of be under, it could be included under some of these. Um, call for brand new designs could basically include both of those. Read options. the question and kind of talk about what's on the screen, if you don't mind. Uh, the question is, which direction do you think the city should go for the future of the St. Petersburg Pier? Uh, number one is demolish only, demolish the existing pier, and leave the waterfront without any pier structure. Number two is refurbish existing, refurbish the existing pier structure and call for redesign options. Number three is, <clears throat> number three is vote on the recent designs, demolish the current pier, and vote on the recent design submissions like the wave, the lens, and the eye. And option four is call for new designs, demolish the existing pier, and call for brand new design options to be voted on. And how many uh, have you had to call in? Uh, we're at 352 votes, uh, which really isn't that bad. That is, uh, we haven't done the demographic work yet to see if this is a representational sample, but um, 352 is uh, st st <clears throat> a statistically significant number. Uh, so we can assume that this has at least some legitimacy. Um, typically, when we do outbound polling, we go for a statistically significant sample uh, that is over 400, and we're pretty close to that now. And by next week, uh, especially if we're on TV, uh, <laughs> we'll definitely be over 400. Okay. All right. But uh, you were kind of alluding to it before. What do you do, I guess, what do you say for the folks who say that my, my, my response is not on that four? It's not one, two, three, or four. Well, this is just a prototype. Is there going to be, I guess... a concept. We'll have, uh, like we do... Are you going to have, like, a write-in <laughs> or something? In, in, in almost all of our polls that we do uh, now, we have an unsure or don't know or other option. Uh, which uh, actually in a lot of uh, local elections, like uh, for District 2, unknown or undecided is winning right now. 
So in our, we did a, a poll last week, uh -huh. and I think Undecided has 40% in District 2 for City Council, which beats the incumbent and the challenger. Funny. So, uh, yeah. So uh, unfortunately, when you include an unknown or an undecided option, um, oftentimes it gets a lot of votes and kind of decreases. It, 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 it doesn't force people to make up their mind or to make up a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely, uh, these were not crafted with, with citizen input. But going forward, uh, you know, we're going to have the first question is going to be free form. So literally, and we've already had some people email us. Uh, one person had the idea of build a raised stadium where the pier is and have it in the shape of a ray, uh, which would clearly be beyond the budget of a $50 million <laughs> pier. But the point is we're getting these ideas, and we need that kind of feedback in order to have something that the citizens will embrace and will buy into, uh, having those ideas come from them. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to add? Uh, call 727-944-1044 to vote. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be able to vote on the next ballots if, they, if they're on the phone list, because we'll, we'll also call them back. So right. they, once you enroll, you stay enrolled. If enroll, then we'll keep them in our vote St. Pete list, and we will call them for future polls um, as soon as they are released. So this is an outbound and inbound thing. We can do it both ways. So you... You call you call them? Well, what happens is when they call in, they're asked the very last question, would you like us to contact you with future vote St. Pete.org polls mm -hmm. on this subject? And if they press one, that puts them on our list to call when we release our next uh, poll. Okay. So we would proactively call them when the next new one is released. Okay. <clears throat> and that would help. But if they say no, then you leave. They say no, then we don't call them. Okay. All right. It's an opt-in. Okay. That's all right. And you mind if I get some shots on that laptop? Go right ahead. And you said that the numbers stay private. The phone numbers, the phone yes. Numbers. We, we keep them, we have the full phone numbers on the back end. And we're going to be using them to match up to voter records of validated phone numbers we have. Because as we go forward, we'll be able to uh, supplement or validate the results we get by placing uh, scientific outbound polling, uh, random voter outbound polling, which is what we plan on doing as we get further along. Okay. And that's what kind of what you were kind of talking about a little bit, right? Yeah. Well, I was, there's a couple of ways of sort of auditing the people who have called in all the numbers to making sure we have a, a sampling uh, uniform throughout the city. Mm -hmm. So that's one. But the final thing is you use this, take the temperature as you go through each stage, and then you either have a regular election if you really want to verify, or you can have a, we can we can poll the whole city and we'll probably be within two or three points of, of what a regular election would have revealed. Mm -hmm. What did your polling show for the, the peer? Uh, pretty much how the, the vote went. If once you remove undecided, we pulled a week before, mm -hmm. and when you remove undecided, I think we were within a half a percent of the end result. Oh, wow. So we were really close, and we had Foster and Christman one percent apart, and I think they ended up being one point seven percent apart mm -hmm. on the final vote. So we were really close, considering <laughs> our our margin of error. I think was about three percent, and we were half that. Oh wow. And that's pretty much what we've seen in the other recent elections that we've done in the, the November uh, general election last year. We were really close um, to the end results. We got Lori online. We don't want to take her. Uh -oh. We don't want to show her on TV. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's <laughs> just so Leonard's funny. laptop. That's Skype. <laughs> Leonard's Skype. I guess it's my. Si I guess my sister wants to weigh in. individually before the 12th, mm -hmm. as well as uh, requesting a meeting with the mayor. Uh, so we'll see if uh, 
if they get back to me. And <laughs> I, I would like to go over the current platform as well as uh, the step process that we plan on going forward with for the amenities, the first phase. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the plan is kind of figure out what people want there, then let the design competition happen with the architects seeing what the people say they want in, you know, in ranking order. You know, do they want air-conditioned restaurant space? Do they want fishing? Do they want those specific things? Mm -hmm. So that they can plan their architectural designs around what the people say they want. Then, you know, if you go by the 828 commission, they said, we'll start with 30, we'll whittle it down to 10, then hopefully we would be able to take over uh, input at that point in time and lay out those 10 layouts and get approval ratings on all of them, get feedback on each of them, let the people vote on which of the 10 they want, and, you know, if it means whittling it down from there and going to a real vote, we could do that, or we could, you know, keep this platform going for that vote. Uh, we're very flexible, so hopefully we'll be able to play a part once the designs have been submitted. Okay. You said uh, possibly put the 10 on there? Is that what you were saying when you... Yeah. Once we get to once that state. Get now, to the 10, yeah. It's a lot of ifs have to happen <laughs> for that yeah. to be in place, but that was the 828 recommendation. Mm -hmm. you start, they'll call for 30, they'll whittle it down to 10, then they'll let the public weigh in on those 10 those ten designs. Yeah. But really the first step is getting public buy-in on what you want out there. Because a lot of the complaints about the lens was there's no air conditioning, there's no shelter, there's no enclosed shelter out there. Um, so is that something that's really important? That's something we want to figure out. Do you want to be able to drive your car out there? Is that really important? We need to figure that out. Now, the polling that you uh, that you do now, do you usually do it by phone, with the phone number? Outbound. Outbound. Um, it's, it, for random sample statistical significant polling, you have to, we start with the whole of, uh, let's say, St. Petersburg, for instance. Mm -hmm. And then we select a random sample of thousands of St. Petersburg voters. And we put them aside, and those are the only people we will accept input from. And we call them, the ones we have phone numbers from, and we also have their phone numbers uh, flagged so that if they call in, if they miss the phone call, or if they want to change their vote, they can call in. But only the people who we flagged do we calculate the vote for. Okay. So if somebody were to call in... And how are you flagging them? You said through demographics? Through, through the, well, yeah, demographic, party, race, gender, age. Because you know what sampling you want of each group. Because that's that all thing? included in the voter records. Yeah. Okay. So we know that, you know, we need, uh, what is it, 18% of people over 70. Okay. And 32%. 18%, that's all? I think <laughs> people over 70. Okay. And I it's know. like 32% of 50 to 70. And then, you know, 33% of 30 to 50, and mm -hmm. it's only like 13% of people under 30. Oh, wow. And then, you know, the other demographics, the party, it's pretty um, um, lopsided toward the Democratic side. I think it's about 48% Democrat, 46% Democrat. Mm -hmm. And then 28% Republican, and then the rest independent. So we try to get a good sampling of all of those together. Okay, I see. I see. And then we call them all, and then we accept phone calls in from them for a certain time period. And it's never more than 10% of people that call in to vote. But we, we always get, I don't know, maybe 1% of people will call in and either change their vote or try to vote a second time, but they only get counted once per voter. Oh, so that's how it works right now. Oh. Okay, so this is different from what you usually do. This is different, and we plan on using outbound to help validate the results we get from this. But we wanted this to be more of a participatory thing where anybody in the city... This isn't just for voters. You know, you could be a, a non-voting uh, resident. You could be somebody who moved from Canada 20 years ago and lives here but can't vote uh, and still have a say in this. Anybody can call. Somebody Anybody Somebody call. in another county? Somebody in another state. So even me uh, in Pasco, I can call. Yes, you can. But, of course, 
But then we when can, you look up the n numbers... We can categorize it all. So <laughs> oh, okay. what we can say <laughs> is these are from people outside of 727. Oh, these okay. are people from... That's what we'll be able to do. When we get the final results, we'll be able to say these are validated voters. Mm -hmm. These are people outside of 727. Oh. These are people... You know, We'll be able to chunk it up like that. Mm -hmm. But even within... Uh, it it's, it's, might be interesting to find out, even within validated people... You know, voters of St. Petersburg. There are people that have phones from yeah, Guam. Yeah, that's what we were just saying. You know, that Hawaii, Alaska. Yeah, they live here, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people, phones are portable, so yeah. people bring their phones, but the majority but is... Once you, I guess once you look at the uh, voting record, then I suppose you'll see. Yeah. Really